Radio Rahim here with Freddie Roach at Wildcard Boxing Gym. We're getting ready for Victor Postal to face Terrence Crawford. We've seen a lot of hype on this fight. It's a pay-per-view fight, but a lot of the hype, a lot of the attention seems to be focused around Crawford. How does uh, Postal receive that, I guess, imbalance in the promotion of the fight, and does he take that personally? I don't think so. You know, he's uh, from a foreign country, and his English is not is not that good yet, but he's, he is practicing. He is going to lessons in school to learn the English. But, um, you know, the local kid who's been on TV quite a bit from Nebraska, is, they've made it into a little bit of a up-and-coming star. And, um, you know, um, I feel like the, prom the promoters need him to win, and uh, they'll be upset if we win. And But... Um, we're going to do everything. We, we've already done everything we can to win this fight. So we've got a couple more days uh, left of sparring, and um, by Monday we'll be ready to travel to Las Vegas. You know, you say that it's good for the promoters if Crawford wins. HBO is obviously behind Crawford. Are you at all concerned about losing the fight on the cards if you feel like you won it? I mean, you, you know, you've, you've experienced things like that in the past or felt like you have. Is there a danger for that in this fight? I'm sure there is, but the thing is, um, you know, we, we told the uh, Las Vegas Commission, of, like, when we were selecting the referees and judges and so forth, all we want is a fair shake. That's all, that's all we're, at, we're asking for, and I don't think that's too much to ask for by anyone. When you look at the fights uh, coming down uh, the line, we're hoping, a lot of fans are hoping, that we do see Pacquiao again. And there's been so much in the news about who's it going to be, how it's going to shape out. W what have you heard about this uh, Bronner deal, and how close was it actually to being made? I've heard rumor of the Bronner deal, and that's about it. I hear they made him an offer, and he denied it. So that's basically all I really know. But I don't, need, you know, I don't know how much money he was offered, or, but... Um, you know, Broner, um, he's a f friend of mine. I, I mean, he treats me with a lot of respect, and he's, hi, Mr. Roche, how are you? He's very kind. But if he fights my guy, I, I, that will probably all change, but that's okay. <laughs> you, well, I guess we hear a lot from Bob Arum about uh, Manny coming back, but not anything from the man himself. Have you talked to Pacquiao, and what is his desire to step back in the ring? Um, after his last fight, before he left for the Philippines, he told me that he felt really good, and uh, he knows he has a couple of fights left in him, and um, maybe, maybe he'll retire, maybe he won't. But the, the, when he said that to me, I had a feeling that he'll be back soon. Another fighter that we're looking to come back soon, and it seems like it's starting to be a long wait, is Cotto. Has there been any movement on an opponent, and where's Cotto at as far as uh, his next fight? They told me that I'll, I will know by next weekend, so I'm waiting for a phone call. Who are the candidates? Can you, can you tell us what you're looking at? No. Is, <laughs> is Koto uh, training at all, or is he, is he back in the gym? He's in the gym. He's training every day. Uh, we know that you've got Chavez uh, Jr. No? Uh, he's took a, he is like getting a lot of pressure on him and just wouldn't like it, so he told me he's going to train at home for a while, and I said, okay. So I don't think he's going to fight this moment. My next fight after this one is my new fighter, Corey, from our, um, right there, that guy. Right, so uh, Cuellar, right? Cuellar, the featherweight champion in the world. Yeah, so he's fighting Abner Morris next. Well, yeah, I mean, he's, he's jumped in. That fight got postponed. Now he's here. Are you guys changing the game plan from Mars when he came in? Obviously, he must have had something in mind. Are you switching that up or continuing on the path he was on? No, it's a whole new ball game because it's, I'm just I'm the head trainer now, and it's um, um, style and how he's going to fight this fight is completely different from the other trainers. So, but he's a great student and uh, hard worker, and uh, I like that in people, as you know. As you, yeah, I do know that, and you know that's been the knock on uh, Chavez for quite a while now. You say he's training at home. That doesn't sound good. How did that conversation go, and do you still have confidence that he's going to be able to put in the kind of work and effort it takes for him to become the fighter that people think he could be? You know, I'm trying to bring back the old, the old, the old one, the old guy that, that never said no to me once in four, four fights and so forth. And I haven't found that guy yet. And so... But I do like him as a person, and I do, I do want to help him if I can. But the thing is, there's only so much I can do. You know, the thing is, if he doesn't come here, I, you know, there's, not, there's, not, there's not much I can do. 
there's no shortage of fighters, Freddie, that come to you for a second uh, life, for another chapter in their career. And now it's even outside of boxing. You've got GSP in here. He's talking return. Uh, where is he at in, in training? And is, is it Bisbing, the opponent, that's, ex that's expected for him to fight first? Uh, I heard that he did not, that UFC didn't, 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 I don't think they would want that fight, but um, he um, he's thinking about fighting again, I know, I know, and he trains every day of his life anyway, so he, he when he was in LA, he came back and trained, we had a very good session, and, um, you know, like who, when, where, I have no idea. I, I you know, I don't follow U the uh, UFC quite as closely as I do boxing, of course. I can tell you a lot more about boxing than I can UFC. <laughs> but I do know you follow a little bit, and you've had fighters in here like GSP, Ronda Rousey is, you know, considered a friend of yours. And we've seen kind of uh, a musical chairs with that Bantamweight women's title. Do you think at this point Ronda Rousey is coming back or has a shot to fight like Nunn? Or, where is she at? Where do you think she fits in the equation now? Well... That girl that fought from Brazil the other night, she was so mean. I says, I, I mean, she was, she nice. was like, she's very, she's a very good fighter. I mean, I, I, I'm scared of her myself. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm not, I'm not scared of too many girls. <laughs> but uh, she's, she's like, she was vicious. And uh, the thing is, um, she's gonna give anyone trouble, I would say. But uh, you know, Ronda could, uh, you know, Ronda obviously has, has some talent also, and um, you know. She, if you make one mistake in MMA and you get in the wrong position and the other person takes advantage of it, it ends quickly. So um, she, you know, possibly could maybe, uh, you know, choke this girl out, do something. She possibly could win, but she possibly could lose also because this girl is, she's mean. I mean, she's, she, she likes to fight. I mean, I can see that. So um, some, that's a fight I, I, I would probably pay for that one. She showed some boxing skills, too. It looked like she had a stiff jab and whatnot, but she's not a boxer like home. Do you think if Ronda came to you, could you teach her enough to box with a girl like none? Uh, she's had enough uh, boxing experience in her past to be as good as she can, she, she can be. I mean, the, the, the trainers oh, over in Glendale, they, they're good guys. and good. They, they, they push her. They make her work hard. You know, I, I know they're not just working on one thing and just, like, depending on her choking somebody out or getting leg lock or arm lock or whatever, maybe. But the thing is, they, they, they're good boxing coaches also, and I have a lot of respect for them. So I, I'm sure that they, they've taught her enough. Um, is it enough? We don't know. Because the other girl, um, it's kind of like, how, really, how good is she? Like, uh, she's mean and all that and stuff like this, but when she gets whacked, what happens to her? Right. You know, does she fall apart or does she suck it up? We don't know. So, you know, she's still very green in America. She only fought on American TV once now that I know of. So, has she ever fought before on t TV? Uh, probably, yeah, on undercards of the UFC. That's the first time I ever saw her either. Yeah, yeah, so. So, yeah so, I mean, she's, she looks good, but then she's going to have to prove it, I mean, over and over again. Well, it's if we bring it back to boxing, uh, other fights that don't quite uh, come through this gym, but uh, I'm sure you're paying attention to. We just saw, you know, Triple G, who you've been critical of in the past, take a fight with Kell Brook. Obviously, he's a welterweight. First, let me ask you, do you feel like Kell Brook's got a shot? How do you feel about that matchup? Um, you know, I don't know Kell Brook, and I've never seen him fight. I've, I've seen him, I've read articles on him, and I've seen pictures of him. He's a real strong kid, and, and um, you know, um, Amir Khan, maybe he's ducking him, maybe not, but, but it doesn't seem like he, he wants a big fight, and he can never get one, it seems like. And then um, this opportunity came aboard, and they, he jumped up and wait, and, and it's going to be the same result, I feel, as when Amir Khan jumped up too high and wait. You know, I, I don't see it going any other way. I think Triple G is the best fighter pound for pound in the world today. Do you take do you, you take any credit away from him for being willing to fight a, a welterweight and not sticking to his like his middleweight I mean, middleweight guns? Well, the thing is, I mean, there's nobody else out there that will fight him though. I mean, these guys are all saying no. He's a dangerous guy. I mean, I don't think it's really his fault. I think the welterweight it was his choice to move up. I mean, the welterweight has to come in at 160 now, so it's his choice. It's not Triple G's choice. 
I saw it up to him. I mean, he's still going to fight at the same weight division he always does. I mean, this guy wants to jump up two weight classes to meet him and thinks he can meet him. I, but I think he's thinking a little bit wrong, but uh, we'll see. <laughs> now, you said that Triple G is the number one pound for pound fighter. Andre Ward and his fans would argue with you there. We know. Uh, well, what's he done lately? I mean, uh, since his retirement, his two, two comeback fights not do good, and then his you know, his next opponent didn't look that good this weekend either. But um, the thing is, he, he still got a lot of dust on him from that two year layoff. I mean, he's got he's got a long way to go to be able to be Kovalev. Kovalev. Uh, he. Where he's at right now, I, I don't think he's ready for that. I mean, I like Andre Ward. I think he's a good boxer and so forth. But I do feel that that two-year layoff hurt him much more than he thinks. And, you know, two years is a long time. A long time. So you picking Kovalev in that fight right now? No. Because he looks so bad in his last fight. <laughs> so I can't really pick him. I like him as a friend. Yes, he is my friend. And, uh, you know, I, I've met Ward a couple of times. And he's a very nice guy also. Um, I really do. Uh, I don't really care who wins that fight. But it's a, it would be a very interesting fight to watch. So. And lastly, I'm going to wrap it right back around to Pacquiao. Because since we don't have a definitive answer there. And if Bronner is out of the picture, Danny Garcia has been mentioned. You know, um... Save Mayweather, of course, if that not can't be the case. What opponent would Manny come back to fight? Who's worth it? Mayweather. I mean, <laughs> I, I saw Les Moonves in the restaurant last night, and I, you know what he said to me? Huh. He said, let's do it again. I you, said, sure, I'll do it. No, <laughs> so and he went and sat down, and I went and sat down. Now, the, the fight happened in a restaurant. We, were, we, we weren't together, yeah. um, but we, uh, we walked past each other. I was getting... I was going to my table, he was going to his table. Hey, hey Les, how you doing? And he's feeling oh, pretty good. And I says, you know, I said, everything okay? He said, yeah, I said, yeah, because I knew there was a little trouble with that one waiter who wanted to get paid for giving right. Les my phone number, but which he didn't do, because I gave, I didn't, I never gave that guy my phone number. But anyway, so, um, but the thing is, I, I said, uh, I said, I, what do you, I said, what do you think about what, what's Mayweather going to do? And he said, maybe we'll do it again. I said, I'd love that, Les. And he, he, we, we laughed and walked away. And it was, um, it was interesting. That's one thing that, you know, Bob Arum, you, I'm assuming Pacquiao are all on the same page. Were you willing to fight that fight again? You and Mayweather are closer friends now, apparently, than ever before. Do you feel like he's up for that fight? Well, th that's what we're waiting to hear, I guess, because I know Manny's up for it. I know I'm up for it. I know Les is up to it. I mean, he said that to me, and I, I, I like what I, I liked it. And um, is Mayweather up to it? I'm not sure. But the thing is, uh, I, I don't know. You know, he was very nice to me. He came to the gym. He very polite. Very. You know, he's always been a nice guy to me. I mean, I, uh, I have no dislike for him at all. I don't like Roger, and I don't like his father. Okay, that's everyone knows that. But the kid is always. Hi, Mr. Roach. How are you? He's always very respectful. He came to the gym. He was a very. He acted like a gentleman, like he, he's like he's supposed to, uh, like he's supposed to. So it was, um, you know, it was a nice visit, and we talked a little bit, but not about boxing or fighting. Well, I did ask him if he's been training, yeah. and he said, "Freddie, since I retired, I have not trained one day." <laughs> I said, "You're a gym rat. You train every day." He said, "Nope." I said, I, "When I retired, I haven't trained one day since," and that caught me by surprise a little bit. But okay. has Manny been training? Manny does never trains without me. Manny plays basketball six, eight, ten, twelve games a day. He runs and runs. He stays in shape all the time by playing basketball, his favorite sport. And lastly, Freddie, uh, is there any fight like that sign? Any fight that you're looking forward to? I mean, that you you can't wait to sit at least at home and be like, this is what I want to see. Well, you know, the Ward, the Ward fight, uh, Kovala fight, I know Ward has one more tuna fight first. And stuff, that's an interesting fight because one guy was so good at one time, he's a great boxer and so forth, and that, you know, I don't think he's quite back to that point yet, but he showed a lot of dust in his last two his two comeback fights, and Kovalev's is just like a real mean, dangerous guy. 
who looked kind of ordinary in his last fight, though, for some reason. I'm not sure why, when he fought in Russia. I mean, I'm sure everyone will agree with me. He didn't look the same as he as he always has. But, you know, styles make fights, and um, that's one fight I would like to see. What do you think about uh, Canelo Smith? Can Canelo is, is fighting uh, Liam Smith over there in the, in the UK? You know, no, that fight's over here. Oh, yeah, yeah, in Vegas, right. Yeah, Liam's coming here to train. Yeah. They call me. So you're training him? No, no, no. He's, he has his, his own trainers. But um, I, I was I was helping him set up sparring partners. For okay. the, so, yeah. So Liam will train here. He's a gentleman. He's a nice kid. He's really tough. I don't know if he's good enough to win that fight. But I don't count him out, though, completely. Because he's a tough guy. He is a real hard guy. He has like three or four brothers that are all professional fighters. His dad's a weightlifter. I mean, a very athletic family. Very um, nice, nice people. Um, I like him a lot. So um, that's a good. I, I think that's a great fight. Thank you, Freddie. I appreciate it. Always generous with the time. Radio Rahim and Wildcard Boxing Gym with Freddie Roach.